What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potential of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those you out there who may be new to the game and just need a little bit of advice or for those of you out there who just want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year. So yes, in today's episode of Who to Sign For guys, we are going to take a look at Wolfsburg. That's right, VFL Wolfsburg of the Bundesliga in Germany. And this is a really fun team to use in this year's FIFA career mode. Now they're a four-star team and they start off with around 43 to 45 million pounds in the budget, depending on wage budget alterations. But their objectives in the first season are quite strong. It's pretty challenging in the first year at the Volkswagen Arena. You've got to finish in the top four in the Bundesliga, reach the last 16 of the cup. That one's definitely achievable, but also win the Europa League as well. So two incredibly strong objectives there, both in the league and in Europe. And whilst the cup objective is pretty straightforward, it's not going to be an easy season at the Volkswagen Arena in your first year. Regardless, they do have a four-star team. As you can see, it's pretty decent there are a couple of good young talents in there as well but for the most part if you are to hit that very strong league objective and also win the Europa League as well this is a team that's going to need an improvement right in the very first season and again around 42 to 45 million in the transfer budget you should be able to do that to give yourself the best possible chance now as I run you through the team here the best two young talents to look out for are probably Josip Brekolo the Croatian left winger and also Schlager uh, the central midfielder as well there are a couple of other decent players in here that are worth keeping your eye on in the very first season and in the first season as well you've got no players that are in on loan of Wolfsburg a bit of a rarity in this year's FIFA career but no players are in on loan and uh, four players have their deals that come the end of the year you've got Klinger uh, Robin Noke uh, Azawi and also Gwilavogui now personally speaking I would let all four of those go come the end of the season or during the season try and sell them for a uh, for a transfer fee but you might want to keep Gwilavogui and ask us the holding midfielder is the club captain of Wolfsburg Wolfsburg as well. So whilst he is 28 and due to 29, uh, turn 29 during the season, you might want a younger option. He is 80 rated. He is one of the best players in the team. And of course, as he is club captain as well, you might want to keep hold of him. Really, it's up to you. They've also got a few players that are out on loan right now that I would recommend calling, such as Eunice Malley and uh, Jeffrey Brumer as well. Uh, those are the players that are out on loan right now that as they're in their mid-20s, they don't really need game time and they're good enough to play a role in your first team in the first season. Or if you want, you can sell them on for a transfer fee. I always recommend this in FIFA career mode. If you go down the list of your squad and you see players are out on loan that have what you call resale value, then it's worth bringing them back to either use them in your first team in the first season or selling them on for a transfer fee. Like in the case here of Jeffrey Brumer, we recalled him for a very cheap fee and in the end we sold him to Goodison Park for I believe around £7 million. So otherwise he's out on loan, 27 years old, not really doing anything, but instead we recall him, pay a very small fee, but then get a much bigger fee to sell him in the first season it just makes financial sense in uh, in career mode so uh, yep yeah, you'll see we were selling all of our players on the transfer list to begin with and then I decided to go after my first signing with Wolfsburg now of course you saw the team earlier it is a four-star team it's really decent it's a little bit of young talent but of course if you are going to hit those very strong objectives of finishing in the top four in the Bundesliga which is very hard to do as you know Bayern are always going to win it Dortmund are going to be in there guaranteed and probably RB Leipzig as well there's really only one or perhaps at the very most two spots available for you you need to improve your team and get more first team quality and the area I'd recommend strengthening the most is the centre back role they do actually have a couple of decent young talents in the centre back role but you want someone that can come in straight away and improve your back line uh, and play alongside John Brooks the American there are a few names on the shortlist for you here you got uh, Joe Gomez of uh, Liverpool Upa Meccano of RB Leipzig Konate of RB Leipzig as well and I would definitely recommend out of a lot of them Deo Upa Meccano now he plays for RB Leipzig so of course he knows the Bundesliga inside and out he's only 20 years old he's a French center half and I'm sure if you've played FIFA career mode you've came across this guy before he starts off 80 overall at 20 but he grows to 89 at his full potential he becomes one of the best center backs in world football and with dynamic potential you can get this guy into the 90s with absolutely no problem whatsoever he's an absolutely physical beast he's six foot one he's got 88 strength great jumping and his defensive stats already are really good with a three-star weak foot as well. 
This guy again becomes one of the best centre backs in world football when it's all said and done and he's in his prime. And again, with dynamic potential this year, there's absolutely no reason why you can't get him into the 90s. 89 potential may be his base, but yeah, you're probably looking more likely that it will end up as a 90, 91, perhaps even 92 overall centre back and the best in the world when it's all said and done. And for around 23, 24 million pounds, I think we paid, that's an absolute bargain for a future world beater. But to ask for another position to strengthen with Wolfsburg again you start off around a 40 to 45 million pounds in the transfer budget I would recommend a new right-sided player as they play a 4-2-3-1 several players I'd recommend you've got Zykankov of Dynamo Kiev you've got Adama Traore of Wolves for a cheaper option uh, Jonathan Icone in there as well and also Ferran Torres of Valencia as well really any of these guys would be really really good options but I must say out of a lot of them I would probably target this Spaniard as Ferran Torres has the highest potential out of the lot I believe with 88 potential and he starts off 79 overall at just 19 years old so he's a teenage wonder kid and one of the best reasons uh, to, to buy for, uh, for Antores is because at the Mestalla they don't seem to hold you to ransom for him in any career mode save I've done they're pretty 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 easy to negotiate with really Valencia and they'll sell him for quite a cheap deal we got him for just over his valuation which is around 18.1 mil plus a small percentage of uh, next fee clause as well and his wages are really cheap too on just £25,000 a week. For Antora, 79 rated to begin with again just 19 years old so he's a teenage wonder kid, a teenage star, he's got some brilliant stats, 89 acceleration is his highest stat and he can play on both sides of the flank and through the middle as well so a really versatile player with high medium work rates, great technical stats and 4 star, 4 star as well. The kid is set to be a star and with 88 potential just like with Upa Meccano with the dynamic dynamic potential you can get this guy into the 90s so yeah great signing definitely worth picking up and again because Valencia don't seem to hold you uh, hold you to ransom over him you can get him for around 18 to 19 million pounds which is an absolute steal for one of the best teenage wonder kid wingers in the game so yep Upa Meccano and Torres are in 89 and 88 potential respectively both really really great options they'll both go right into the first team in this Wolfsburg first 11 and improve your team whilst making it younger as well well, and after our first two targets were in, we decided to sell a few more players here. Our backup goalkeeper per van and also Marcel Tisserand as well. A not bad squad centre after having this guy. 26 years old, 74 raids, you can play left back as well. But you got better and uh, younger options in the team, especially now the Upa Meccano who's just joined the ranks uh, as well. So we sold him to Besiktas for 7.5 mil. Per van went for 3 mil. I think it was three million pounds we sold him for as well as so we sold our backup goalkeeper there. Wolfsburg have got like four or five goalkeepers in the first season. But once you sell Pervan, you will need a better backup goalkeeper for the bench. And I recommend this guy for everyone doing a Bundesliga career mode. And even if you're not doing a Bundesliga career mode, I just can't recommend this guy highly enough. Alexander Newbell is one of the best young backup goalkeepers you can buy in FIFA 20 career mode. Why is that, you ask? Because he's only valued at 7.5 million pounds. And because he's out of contract come the end of the season you can almost always get him for either under his valuation or his valuation we paid seven mil to get him his weekly wages are really cheap he's only 22 years old he starts off 75 rating and he grows to 85 overall at his full potential as well he's an amazing buy in this year's FIFA 20 career mode for your bench he's not going to go in the first team straight away Kevin Castells the Belgian number one is uh, going to be your number one uh, here at Wolfsburg but Nubel coming in as a backup goalkeeper he's nine years younger than Per Van who we just sold we're only spending an extra four million to get the guy after selling Per Van I love the fact he's got a five star weak foot can play out from the back already 85 reflexes imagine that when he's at his potential an 85 overall and again as a backup goalkeeper for less than evaluation with great potential and plus 10 growth you really can't go wrong I'll always recommend him as a backup goalkeeper in this year's fever career mode he's cheap he's got great potential he's on low wages he's a brilliant buy in this year's FIFA but uh, following the signing of Nubel and our third to the team we also sold William our uh, backup right back here as well uh, I think in the end he went to Wolves for 9.5 mil and also Eunice Marley uh, who we recalled as well we sold him to Leicester City as he goes to the King Power as well again just like Jeffrey Broom we recalled this guy at the start of the episode here and I just I can't recommend doing that enough when you start off FIFA career mode you know always look down the squad look who's out on loan right now and if it's a player
player in their mid to late 20s that's already got a decent rating, you can bring him back and either use him in the first team in the first season or again sell him on for a much bigger profit. You see that happen with Jeffrey Bruma earlier on in the episode, recording him for a small fee and selling him for £7 million. We do the exact same with Eunice Marley in just a moment's time as we sell William here again to Molyneux for 9.5 mil. With Marley and Bruma, we, we recalled them for probably less than a million pounds. And in the end, as you'll see, we sold the two of them combined for around 15 million pounds. It's just a really good way of getting extra cash in your budget for players that right now are otherwise doing you absolutely nothing currently out on loan. But uh, following the sales there, we did go after a new right back. Obviously, after selling William, we'd only have Kevin and Babu, uh, the young Swiss right back in our team. And I would recommend someone that's better and also around the same age as well. Now, I've got two targets for you on the shortlist here. And my number one target would be this guy who I always recommend. He's one of my favourite right backs in this year's FIFA career mode. It's Lucas Klosterman of RB Leipzig. He's only 23 years old, but 81 rated and grows to 85 overall. Unfortunately, in the first summer window, you might find he's not available to buy as RB Leipzig don't have much depth in that position. Sometimes you'll get lucky and he'll be available. But in this FIFA career mode, sadly, he was not able for me to purchase. But my B option, if you will, the uh, second option will be this guy, Hector Bayerin of Arsenal, who to be fair, is not a bad replacement if you can't get Klosterman. The Spaniard is a really rapid player, as you know. He's valued at £13 million. I was held to ransom a little bit by Mikel Arteta in this save and had to fork over £21 million for him, which is quite a big overspend, really, for the Spaniard. But I didn't have any other targets available, so had to go for him. But either way, it's still not that bad of a fee. You're probably more likely to pay around £17 to £19 million. But either way, it'll be better than Kevin and Babu, the Swiss right back right now. They're around the same pace. He, they're, they're the same age, 24 years old, but he's one rating higher and also grows to 84 at his full potential as well. So like Cooper Meccano and like Ferran Torres, he's going to go right into your first 11 and it's a nice strong Spanish link, if you will, down that right-hand side with the former Valencia man. So yeah, Hector Bayerin was our fourth signing of the windows. We continue to make this side younger and better as well. And with the rest of the cash we had in the budget, I didn't feel the need to make any more signings for the first team I just decided to fill the squad out with good young German talent here as of course you'll be playing in Europe this season and therefore you will need a fixed squad and some good youngsters to keep your eye on as the years go by there are three targets I always recommend if you're doing a Bundesliga career mode or a German team uh, in this year's free, uh, FIFA career mode Linton Miner who is an absolutely rapid young winger and definitely worth picking up you'll probably pay around five to six million for him he's got 84 potential though and it's going to be rapid when he's at his peak and can play on both sides of the flank. One of my favourite hidden gems in the game that I sign in almost every single who to sign for episode, Joshua Wagnerman of Hamburg. I can't recommend this guy enough. I've called him like a uh, a sort of a future Adama Traore, really. He can play on both sides of the pitch. He's got a four-star weak foot. He's six foot two. He's rapid. He's very versatile. And he's going to be a physical beast as the years go by with 85 potential as he grows 19 ratings. And also my final signing was this guy, right here. He's one of the best young German strikers you can buy. It's Kareem Adeyemi, who currently plays for RB Salzburg in Austria. You can get him for around his valuation, which is an absolute bargain. And whilst he only starts off 67 rated, he's just 17 years old and he grows to 85 overall as well. So it's a plus 18 growth for the winger slash striker, who's also got the flair trait and four star skill moves as well, whilst being rapid with some decent technicals to begin with. Are just 17 years old. So yes, after those three signings there for the reserves, some good young talent coming into this Wolfsburg team, you can see we improved the side so well in the first season. Three players going to the first 11, one for the bench, and then three great kids to watch out for in the future as well. We ended up selling seven players for 44.1 mil. Most of those players were in their mid-20s and a couple in their early 30s, I believe, as well. Just a one in their early 30s, actually, but most in the mid to late 20s. But we signed seven players for 78.6 million pounds. It was a net loss of 34.5 mil. Lots of money getting exchanged in the first window. When you look at the age of the players coming in, no one older than Hector Bayerin at 24 years old. And they're all really great young talents for the future as we reduced the average age of the squad, made it better and gave it far more potential as well. The question is, after a very busy summer window, could this Wolfsburg team hit the really strong objectives of finishing in the top four, winning the Europa League and reaching the last 16 of the cup? Well, as you can see, we did hit our league objective. We finished in fourth place. In the end, it was RB Leipzig that dropped out of the top 
for, which I found very interesting indeed. Obviously, as you know, Bayern are always going to win the championship in the first season. They did this year doing it undefeated. 32 wins in 34 games, only conceding nine goals. It's crazy how so good they are in, uh, in this year's career mode. But uh, Dortmund were in second. Leverkusen finished in third. We did hold off RB Leipzig to claim that fourth and final Champions League spot. So we hit our league objective. And as you'll see in the DFB Pokal, we actually exceeded our objective. We were asked to reach the round of 16 by the board. We went one step further and reached the quarterfinals, only to be knocked out by the eventual winners, Guess who? Bayern Munich, of course. So Bayern Munich won the trophy, ended our run in the cup. But either way, we still exceeded our objective in the DFB Pokal. But in the Europa League, unfortunately, it was a massive failure. We were asked to win this competition and claim the silverware. In the end, I don't know what happened in that second leg at the Volkswagen Arena, but we were thrashed by Lazio by four goals to nil in Germany and lost the tie 5-1. What happened there? I've got absolutely no idea. But unfortunately, it did mean our Europa League objective was a massive failure. But either way, the domestic objectives were successful. Finishing in the top four, getting Champions League football at the Volkswagen Arena for next season and exceeding our objective in DFB Pokal as well. Whilst we might have failed in Europe, I would still call this a very successful first season at the Volkswagen Arena because we've laid the groundwork early, brought in some really great young talent, some fantastic wonder kids for the future as well. And again, got Champions League football at the home ground for next season as well. So yeah, the, the European objective was a failure, no doubt about it, but I, I rarely ever get three out of three in my Who to Sign For episodes. It's normally two out of three at the very best. And I'd certainly take that as well. Going one step further in the cup, only getting knocked out by the eventual winners by Munich as well. How we had someone different in the round of 16, we probably would have gone to the quarterfinals. But either way, not a bad uh, exceed of, of an objective there. And again, finishing in the top four, that's the mandatory requirement from the board. We did that as well. So the young talents grew really nicely in the first season as well. Linton Minor grew four ratings in the first season. I'm so big on this kid, man. Absolutely rapid and definitely worth picking up. Uh, Upa Meccano grew two ratings. Ferran Torres had an amazing season. He grew four ratings and scored 16 goals in 33 Bundesliga games, plus nine assists as well. Talk about hitting the ground running. And yeah, I must say the young talents coming in look very, very impressive for the future. And I'm sure from season two onwards, you can probably now start to think about trying to topple Bayern Munich for domestic dominance. And from season three and season four onwards, you should be able to think about winning. Champions League titles as well as becoming the best team in Germany as well. It's a project for the Wolfsburg, but a very, very fun one and certainly a team I'd recommend for a FIFA 20 career mode. But that was this episode of Who Sign For, guys. So a big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of Who To Sign For very soon.